I want you to take a look at a few charts with me. And I'm going to ask you a series of questions. And I know in the beginning it's going to be real tough, but as we go through the charts, it's going to become easier and easier for you. Now, I know this is going to be very difficult. We're just starting, right? But study it. I'm going to give you like 60 seconds. Look carefully, and I want you to find the biggest, fattest, longest green bar in the chart. Now, I know it's hard, but take your time, all right? All right. There you go. It can't get, I start off with the obvious and go to the not so obvious. It can't get more obvious than that. This stock actually gapped down. It was trading in this congestion area and opened significantly lower, but managed to rally all the way back up, leaving behind the evidence that, listen, the only way that type of bar can ever be formed is that every institution focused on that stock got on one side of the seesaw. And that side went down and the other side went up. There was not one institution doing anything opposite. That's the way you have to think about that. Now, of course, what ultimately happened was follow through. Now, I want to give you a little extra piece of information. My traders would buy into that bar. Now, of course, that bar is abnormally long. So a stop below that bar means that if you lose, it's going to be big. You've got to either adjust the amount that you buy to compensate for the bigger stop or you go with a percentage stop down, like a 55%. I don't, want, I don't want to lose more than 55% of the green. All of that stuff, I don't want to get into that. But here's what I do want to add. My traders are taught that once you buy, I want every winning play added to. I don't want you to be a onesie trader. Oh, I've bought, now let's see what it does. No, if it starts working, I want you adding to it. But there's a specific way to add. My traders are taught to add on what I call an RBI, which stands for a single red bar all by itself ignored. Now, go run along the chart here, and I want you to look for a single red bar standing all by itself, all right, that gets ignored. Right there, single red bar. It is sandwiched between, yeah, you can flip from, it's sandwiched between two green bars. So first you get a green bar, fine, then a red bar shows up. Now we don't know if another red bar is going to follow, but if it doesn't, if another red bar doesn't follow this single red bar, and then a green bar takes out the high of the single red bar, my traders add. They add on every single solitary red bar that the high of which gets taken out by a green bar. They add on single red bars. So they would add, once the high of that red bar gets taken out, they add. Once the high of that red bar gets taken out, they add. They add on every single red bar ignored and they keep parlaying into a winning play that way, right? So they'll buy the initial event is either a bull elephant or a bottoming tail, and then they start adding on single red bars. They will add if another bottoming tail happens too. Every time a bull elephant or a bottoming tail forms, they add. Every time a single red bar gets ignored, they add. Does it make sense? Got it? All right, good. Okay, next. Now I'm building, I feel like I'm, I'm building, I'm building your house here now. We're layering the knowledge. So look to the far left of this chart and you will clearly see that this was the biggest, giant, fattest, and I have a nickname, the greeniest bar on the chart. All right? It's long. Look at the bars to the left of it. My six-year-old would say, Dad, that's a big, giant, fat, green bar, okay? Now, we buy into these elephant igniting bars. Stop under the low, all right? Now, look at how the elephants went in so big, they said, shh, the water's rocking now. So they want the water to level out before a secondary plunge. They usually don't back 
to back to back to back step in. They step in. The water's rocky, but they need the water to level out first. It levels out. And then, boom, on the second arrow down here. I wish I had a, a pointer. All right. There's your buy. There's your second fattest, longest, tallest green bar on the chart. You buy again. But wait a minute. What's this? A single red bar. All by itself. The high of which gets taken out by a green bar. They buy into the green bar that takes out the high of the single red bar. That bar is an ad. Do you follow this? Buy every bull elephant bar. Buy every bottoming tail bar. And buy every single red bar that gets ignored. Again, the definition of that is a green bar takes out the high of a single red bar. Make sense? Okay. I got one. Now I have to give you the next piece of information. When... Your stock moves far away from a 20-period simple moving average. Please understand this. That is our number one moving average. It is on every single chart we look at, no matter what the financial item. It is on every single time frame and every single financial item, the 20-period moving average. It's a staple. When the stock gets far above the 20, and then produces one of your buyable events, the buyable event becomes a sellable event. I'm going to repeat that. When the stock gets separated from the 20 period moving average, in this elevated, separated position, if you get a bull elephant bar in a separated position, you sell that bull elephant bar. You do not buy it. If you get a tail bar in a separated, elevated position, you sell that tail bar. If you get a single red bar ignored in that elevated position way above the 20, you sell it, you don't buy it. It flips on you. Is this understood? These are only viable if they're not way up there separated from the 20. Now, I want you to use your vision to judge what's separated. A lot of people say, well, Oliver, what's the percentage? Is there a formula for what's separated from the 20? How do I know when it gets far from the 20? Is there a ruler? Is there a right edge? Is there some geometrical tool that you can give me? No, I want you to do it like my kids do it. Wow, that's far above that line, right? Simple. It's far above that line. Now, any actionable bar becomes a sellable bar, even if it looks bullish. All right? Someone had a question back there. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, you mean long position? Yes. But can you go short on them? Yeah, if you're aggressive enough to do that, sure. I, my traders are taught to combine options with their plays. So if, if they have bought here, buy Buy, 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 sell. Now remember, that bar, when it was trading at the high, was a fat, long green bar. It lost more than half of its green. But it became a long green bar that you're supposed to sell into long before it loses all of its greenness. All right? We have percentages for this. Fat green bar, lose a third out. Right. You never want it to lose a half. But remember, when that bar opens, it's not it doesn't start the bar fat and long. It starts as a dot, the open. Then it grows a little bit. Then it's a little bit of green grows more then it's medium green. Then it grows more Then it's big green. Then it's really big green. Now, when you say, wow, that's a big, giant green bar, you don't want a third or more to be lost to the green. If a third of the green comes in, you sell. Now, what my traders will do is sell the stock and sell, what would you sell as an options player? Covered calls. Sell the stock, sell covered calls in that elevated position. Your call premium has exploded. All right? You're not only selling the stock, you're selling calls for 
some additional income on the downside. All right. That's beyond the scope of our talk here today. I think I got it, man. Thank you. That's beyond the talk of our that's beyond the scope of our talk today. But guys, look at this chart. Fat giant green bar. Now remember, every time you get one of the three bars, you add, unless it's in an elevated position. So we're adding, we're buying on this bar. Now I wanna I wanna give you another piece of information. Elephants sometimes recognize that if I step in this water this way, the world's going to know. You see, when your institutional figureheads get on Bloomberg television or CNBC and they talk about, oh, yes, these are the top five holdings in our, in our, in our portfolio and we believe this, the elephant's already in the tub. When they're stepping in, they never show up. Do you follow what I'm saying? It is when all four feet are in, and then they have sat down in the tub that they now become very talkative. Okay? <laughs> all right. But when they're set, before they sit down, they're not talking. Now, they want the rest of the world to come in as they step out. They stand up. The water goes down, then they step out one foot, then another foot, and all of a sudden. But they can only do that if the world's becoming the other side of their cells, right? They can't sell 24 million shares unless they generate enough interest to offset 24 million shares on the sell side. So that's why they become talkative. It's just a big, giant game, all right? So here... You get the buy, wait a minute, let's be quiet, and then you have a little bit of quiet too. But they try to sneak past, they try to sneak an elephant bar past you by breaking it up into pieces that if you put them together, they actually are a giant elephant bar. Sneaky, right? Look at, look at this. This is really one giant elephant bar. It's like a banana that's been sliced up into little pieces, but it's really an elephant bar if you put all those green bars on top of each other. So when I have three relatively solid green bars in a row, in my mind, I stack them on top of each other and say, that's an elephant bar. I buy into the third one. Does that make sense? It's a sliced up elephant bar. They're trying to sneak past you. This, in a sense, is a sliced up elephant bar. This is a sliced up elephant bar. All right, and then I'm adding on that bar, topping tail bar, way above the 20 period moving average. You've got to take profits on that bar. Now, it's beyond the scope of how much do you take off on every sell signal. Do you take everything off? Do you take a third? Do you take a half? All right, that's beyond the scope of our talk today, but